um, welcome to the class. I am Jumbu Vitoano. <coughs> you can call me JB. So, now welcome to this tutorial. We are still on FEM, which is finite elements method. So, last class, we were able to talk about a body, a very given body, and the force is applied at this point. Uh, it is um, it is static here, that is, it is blocked at this point, and also blocked at this point. So, we have fixed point at these two ends. Well, in this question now, the fixed point is as this end only so this pass is free and this is a cantilever so using direct stiffness method determine the nodal displacement of the step block as shown below so this is the block so if you can see we have the length of this one the total length will be 200 millimeter and it is divided that is sectioned in the middle where a force is being applied there so there is a particular object you want to view it in a real life so there is a particular object or a load that is placed at this point. So, and the area of this element here, the surface area is 200 millimeters squared. And the surface area of this element here is 100 millimeters squared. Then um, the length of this one is 150 millimeter, and the length of this one is 200 millimeter. So there is a force applied at point O. Let me call this one point P. So the force applied at point O is 20 kN, and the force applied at point um, P is 10 kilonewton so we have been doing the area so please take the young modulus of the entire object so i told you the other time that the young modulus can be the same for everything so if the elements you are considering is perhaps a steel with the steel then you are to use um you know the um strengths the young modulus of um of a steel is 200 gigapascal and this body we are, to, we are going to consider it to be steel get that so Take the young modulus of this entire body to be E equals to 200 gigapascal. I told you the other time that um, young modulus of an object can be the same. So when we are taking this to be 200 gigapascal because it's a steel. This is the object. Now let us determine the number of nodes we are going to have here. The other time we, I told you that we are going to have like three nodes. If you first look at this um, object, they look alike, right? But they are not going to use the same approach for it. Because the force, there's a force acting at this point here, so the point O and point P. So since there's a force acting here, you must consider that force as well. So I'm going to section in this way. We have first node here one, then let me put another node here two, then put another node here three, then put another here four. So I'm having note four nodes. So what is it telling me? It's telling me that I'm going to have how many elements? If you say three, that means you are right. Just say the number of nodes, the number of nodes four, minus one you subtract one from so this is the formula n minus one where n is the number of nodes number of nodes you get that so we have this since so the number of nodes is um four and that's four minus one we are going to have three elements so let's call this one element one let's call this one element two let's call this one um element three yeah we may ask me why am I not putting section here? Why just section this list? Because no force is acting at this point. If the force is acting here, I will also section it. You get that? So um, let's bring out the parameters. So data given. What are the data we're being given? So we know that from year to year is 200. And from year to here is 100. Now the I think the the area also correspond. Okay, this one is one fifty. My bad. So one fifty millimeter, and the area for this object is two hundred millimeter squared. So the area for this one as well is um hundred millimeter squared. So how do we solve this data given? Let's consider for element one. For element one, so I'm just going to write the parameter. So for element one, this element one. So the area we're being given is what? A1 equals the area here is still the same thing as 200 millimeters squared because we are considering surface area, not um, any other area. It's not like this surface are considered. So the surface area that is, you know, this is going to be circular. So the surface area of this rod is 200 millimeters squared. So I call it A1. Then for the length, L1 
length of this one is from here to here is half of this entire length, which goes towards 100 millimeter. The yeah, another thing we're going to consider is uh, is anything we need to get for this one? Yeah, um, okay, at this point, we're also going to have a young modulus. So the young modulus is general for everything. Which is what? Since the general parameter, I will leave it to the end. So for element two, element two, A2, I'm going to call it A2, it's also what? 200 millimeter squared. Then for element two, the length for element two is also what? 100 millimeter, because from here to here is the length, which is the half of the entire length. So for element three, for element three, the A3, which is the area of this, is given as 100 millimeter squared. And the length, the length 3, is given as, this is length 2. Length 3 is given as 150 millimeter. So the general parameter we've given is uh, as area load at O. Let me call it F. So this will be F1, F2. Let me call it F2, which goes to 20 kN. And we know that 20 kN is the same thing as 2 times 10 to the power 4 Newton. So as I load at this point, at P. So this is F1, F2, F3, F4. Let me call it F4, which is what? 10 kN. So which is the same thing as 10 times 10 to the power um, for Newton, so we know that the material it is uniform; it's the same material. So the young modulus, which is E, is two hundred gigapascal. And I told you this one gigapascal is the same thing as two times ten to the power. You know this is two hundred. Two hundred times ten to the power nine, because gigapascal simply means ten to the power nine. Perhaps Newton millimeter squared or Newton, I mean, 200 times 6 by 9 Pascal. But I'm going to use millimeter squared in this regard. I mean, sorry, meter squared. You have to convert this meter squared. So if you convert this, we're going to be having 2 times 10 to the power, so 10 to the power 5 Newton per millimeter squared. So we have written out our parameters. Then the next we're going to do is what? To start. Um, we discretize it. So after discretizing it, we now assemble the global matrix. Then we solve it. Now let's discretize. You know, we consider it from node to node, for node 1 to 2. Node 1 to 2. So this is node 1 to 2. Remember from Hooke's law that the, it is f equals to ku, where our k equals a e over l. So for node 1 to 2, our node 1 is this, right? So node 1 to 2. So the first that be here is F1, F2. And let's say that the string stiffness here is K1. The string stiffness also here is what's K2. The string stiffness here is what's K3. So the string stiffness that are going to be here is K1. So I'm, well, let me just use the general principle always use. But I like using K1, open brackets, 1, minus 1, minus 1, 1. I prefer using this. Then U1 u2 like just following this convention and take it at every node so at this point we need to determine our k1 our k2 our k3 we determine that with time so the next one is getting for one two three i mean two to three rather so for two to three b f2 f3 is what k2 then one minus one you don't know what? Let's just use our initial notation at the convention so that we don't waste much time on explanation. So this will be K2 minus K2 minus K2 K2. So this will be U2 U3. So the next one is uh, for node 3 to 4. Node 3 to 4. So we have force F3, force F4. Then the strict stiffness in this node is K3. So K3 minus K3 minus K3 
K3. So we have U3, U4. So since we have this, the next we're going to do is that we have, we have to determine the old parameters. Then, to determine the old parameters, we can actually determine that. Let me for determine K1, K2, K3 here. And as we go by, we now assemble it. So K1 is goes to A1, E1 over L1 using this general formula. So our A1 is A1. Remember the area of this one, which is what? 100 times the young modulus is the same thing for everything. 2 times 10 to the power 5 over 100. Wow, superb. Is A1 100? No. Our A1 is 200. So, so if we multiply this 200 times 2 times 10 to the power 5, we can see that this will give us, this cancel this, we will be having 4 times 10 to the power 5 Newton per millimeter. So these are K1. We are going to say K1 to be 4 times 6 per 5 times, I mean, 4 times 6 per 5 Newton per millimeter. Then for K2, it's equals to A2, E2 over L2. So this is going to give us, uh, what is our A2? Our A2 is still the same thing as this A2 here, the A here, which is the area. So 200 times 10 to the power, um, times 2 times 6 per 5 over 100, which is the length of this point. Uh, points that is from two to three so this is also giving us four times 10 to the power five newton per millimeter then the next thing is to get k3 now our k3 from here to here so what is the area of this k3 the area is 100 so 100 the um young modulus is still the same thing so two times 10 to the power five over so what is the length that is 150 wow that's cool. So, you can use calculator to do this. So, perhaps I can also use the normal method, which is 0 cancel 0. This will be 2 over 3. 2 over 3. 4 over 3. So, 4 over 3 will give us 1.333. So, 1.333. Then we don't say 1.33 times 10 to the power 5. I just want to use that convention. Nitty millimeter. Now, we have having four points. And we have to intersect everything. We merge them together. So if we make this one, this one, this one together, we're having F1, F2, F3, F4. I have told you the number of nodes determine the number of the, the um the row for your matrix. The row for your matrix is being determined by the words, the nodes. So since this is four, that is the number of rows gonna have in this matrix will be four. Equals now to get the global string stiffness. Will be we start from k1 this will be k1 minus k1 minus k1 now at this point you have to join your k2 so that'll be k2 i mean k1 plus k2 then this will be what minus k2 this will be minus k2 and this will be k2 now at this point you can see i'm going it is like a diagonal process so k1 minus k1 minus k1 this one so on then at this point which is the last k2 you had your k3 plus k3 minus k3 minus k3 minus so this is going to give us k3 now this is the k3 no so we have to close it at this point you'll be like ah jb what's up what's going to happen to the many point that is empty now let me tell you what to do at this point you had zero zero and at this point, as a year word, zero. And at this point, you have what? Zero. And at this point, you have what? Zero. Then we have what? Four by four matrices. Multiplying our U1, U2, U3, U4. So this is it. Wow. We have in, this is four by one equals to four by four multiplying four by one. So this is what the global matrices for the force and the stif uh, stiffness. So, since having this, how do we solve it? Now, it is very easy, right? Because to solve, to, to solve this, just get your parameter from this um, elements. Then if you can get your parameter, you can now substitute back in it. So let's let's go. F1, the force acting at this point. Is there any force acting here? No. So our F1 is equals to zero. 
So now F2. Perhaps I can even write everything out at once. But let's do it sequentially. Shall. F1 is 0. Now F2, I've given you the parameter of F2 before to be F2 to be equal to um, 2 times 3 to the power 4. Because I actually did this from um, at the beginning of this class. 2 times 3 to the power 4. Then for F3, is there any force acting here? Let's look at it. Is there any force? No. And for F4, is there any force acting there? Yes. And the force is 10 raised to the power 4 Newton. Because 10 kN is 10 raised to the power 4 Newton. Now let us go to the extension. At this point, is there any extension there? U1. Is there any extension here? No. There's no extension because it is static, it is fixed. Now at this point, is there going to be extension? Yes. So U2, there's going to be extension, but we don't know the extension. U3, there goes to the extension. Yes, there goes to the extension because it's going to expand as well. We don't know. And for U4, it is not fixed. Therefore, there's going to be what? Extension. So, how many do we have? We don't know U2, U3, U4. So, that is what we are solving for. So, this is the matrix that we have formed. Now, let's solve this. Now, seeing these points here to be zero, we cannot use it. It's not possible. Because... At the end of the day, U2 equals to zero. And we know that our U2 can never be zero. So ignore this first rule. So let's go to R2, which is root 2. So consider root 2 be having 2 times 10 to the power 4 equals to 10 to the power 5. Open bracket, minus 4 times 0 will give us, you know, it's going to give us zero. And 8 times U2 will give us 8U2. Then minus 4 times this will give us minus 4U3. And 0 times this will give us plus 0 u4. I'm going somewhere. Follow me. So this dividing this will give us 8u2 minus 4u3 plus 0 u4 equals 0 0.2. So I can cut it on my equation 1. So the next thing is what? Go to the next row, which is what? Row 3. So for my row 3, I'll be having... 0 equals to 10 to the power 5. Then open brackets. Now let's go. Row 3. 0 times 0. And minus 4 times u. You go minus 4u2. And this multiplying this will be what? Plus 5.33u3. Then minus 1.33u4. Now if I write this, I'll be having minus 4u2. Plus 5.33u3. Minus 1.33 u4 equals 0. So I call this on my equation 2. Then the last one is what? My row 4. So for row 4, I'm having 10 raised to the power 4 equals 10 raised to the power 5. Open bracket, this 0, multiplying this 2. So I'll be having 0 u2. Then this multiplying this, we have minus 1.33 u3 and 1.33 u4. So, we are aging this, we have in 0 u2 minus 1.33 u3 plus 1.33 u4 equals to 0 0.1, my equation 3. Now, I'm having 3 unknowns. I have 3 equations. So, I can solve this using Sarantinus, uh by converting to Sarantinus equation and solving it using any method I like. But if you have the time, you can use common rule to solve it. Just convert to matrix and you solve it. But if you don't have the time, you have your calculator there. So take your calculator and insert these three equations, one, two, three, accordingly. Then you get the answer for U2, U3, and U4. Okay, so U2 equals to 0 0.075 millimeter. U2 equals to 0 0.1 millimeter. Then U4 equals to 0 0.1752 millimeter. So you, you need to use some most method to solve any of these. I mean, you can use any method to solve these three equations. So after you've gotten the answer, then the answer is U2 equals to 0 0.075. U3 is in millimeter, everything in millimeter. U3 equals to 0 0.1. U4 equals to 0 0.1752. So take note of that. For reaction, so we know that our R equals to KU minus F. So my R is the same thing as R1, R2, 
R3, then R4. Then my K, you know, is the same thing as 10 to the power 5, then 4 minus 4, 0, 0, minus 4, 0, 0, 8, minus 4, 0, minus 4, 0. And this should be 5.33, then minus 1.33, minus 1.33, then 1.33. So this is my global matrix. So we have our U to be U1 is 0. U2 will be, we have been able to get U2 to be 0 0.075 in millimeters, then 0 0.1 in millimeters, then 0 0.1752 millimeters, then minus the force. Force at node 1 is 0. Force at node 2 is 2 times 10 to the power 4. Force at node 3 is 0. And this one is 10 to the power 4 Newton. So for R1, now, let's get our R1. So this R is not rho. But the R here is now its reaction. The reacting force at each node. So we have 10 to the power 5. Open brackets. This times this, which is 0. And this times this. So I'm going to use my calculator to determine the answer for this. Minus 4 times this is giving us minus 0 0.3. Then minus 0 0.3 minus 0. So my answer is just like, um, this is going to be giving me um, minus 3 times 10 to the power 4 Newton. And you know what this minus means? It's what? Compression. So this is my reacting force. Therefore, R2. My R2 is the same thing as 10 to the power 5. You know that this is compression. So you can see remove the minus and you put in brackets compression. You see the same thing. So 10 to the power 5, then minus 4 times 0, 8 times this. So when we do that, 8 times this will give me a 0 0.6. So 0 0.6 minus 4 times this will give me what? minus 0 0.4. Yep, because 0 times this will give me 0. Then minus 2 times 10 to the power 4. Now, if I do this, this will give me 0 0.2. Hmm. This will give me 0 0.2. 0 0.2 times this will give me 2 times 10 to the power 4. So the reaction force is there. Is what? Zero. I told you that anywhere the force is acting, the action force there will equal to 0. So it shows that what, what we did is what? Correct. It shows that this answer we, we have here is correct. So the next one is R3. So our R3. So our R3. So, which is um, our out, which is 10 to the power 5, open brackets, minus 4 times 0. Sorry, we are now in out 3. 0 times 0, then minus 4 times 0 0.75. So, I think that's when it's still as 3, I guess. So, because of minus, we have what? Minus 0 0.3. 0 0.3 of this, then 5.33 times this will give us plus um, 0 0.533, then minus this times this, so um, minus 1.33 times 0 0.1752 is giving me um, minus 0 0.233, 0 0.233 minus you know, this is going to be root 3 minus 0. So at the end of the day, we'll be having 0. The reaction force here is also what? 0. So that simply means there's no force acting at the third node as well. That there's no reaction at the third node as well. So that's what this one is telling us now. So the la last one. So I'm also expecting the last one to be 0 actually. But let's see what is going to come up. R4, which is equals to... Um, you can see this will be zero throughout, zero zero. Then the last, this also is zero, and this will be giving me um, this zero. This give me zero. This give me zero. Minus one point three three, minus one point three three times zero point one, which will give me zero point one three three. Then 
1.33 times 0.175, which gives me um, plus 0.233 minus 10 to the power 4. So this is giving me 1.333, right? So since this is giving me 0.1, if I subtract this from this, it gives me 0.1. But I see that this out for is also what? Zero. So my R1 is the only one having a reaction because that is where the reaction will always be. It's like this. So this is where the fixed point is, and the reaction will be acting here. Because when you draw this, the reaction will come back to this point. And you don't even need to, you don't need much hazard to get that. I can actually say. So, I've gotten my reaction force to be R1 equals to 10 times 10 to the power 4. So, stress in element 1, stress in element 1, stress in element 2, and stress in element 3. So, the stress that will be induced in all these elements, let's determine them. So, for element 1, sigma 1 equals to A1, A1, E1 over L1. So what is our A1? Our A1 is, uh, I guess, 200 times, sorry, this should be sigma because A1, E1, L1 over, I mean, times U2 minus U1. Don't forget this. Don't forget this, please. So our U1 is 0. Our U2 is 0 0.075 millimeter. Our U3 is 0 0.1 1 millimeter 0 0.1752 0 0.1752 millimeter so these are the parameters we got so for sigma 1 is now be 200 times 2 times 10 to the power 5 so u2 0 0.6 times minus 0 will give us 0 0.75 millimeter over the length in um for element 1 is um, 100 millimeter. So at the end of the day, when we multiply this, you're just saying cell, I mean, 4 times this, C times 10 to the power 4, um, 10 to the power 4 Newton millimeter, a uh, millimeter squared. Yep. Newton per millimeter squared. So I can also get this thing to be, I can also get it to be, um, 30 kilo Newton a uh, millimeter squared. So I can show you guys this. You can leave it like this. You can also get like this. You see the same. Element 2. Sigma 2 equals to A2. Then E2 over L2. Then U3 minus U2. So if you solve this, we'll be having... So... What's my A2? It's still the same thing as 200 times my young blues is uh, 2 times 6 by 5 times my U3 is 0 0.1. So 0 0.1 minus 0 0.075. Please pay attention to all those stuff. Minus L2, which is what? 100. So at the end of the day, 10 is power 5. 10 is power 5 Newton per millimeter. Square, which is seen as 100 kilonewton per millimeter squared. This time, we have never seen anything like um, compressive stress. So, that is that. Therefore, element 3. Element 3, we have sigma 3 equals to A3, then E2, U4 minus U3 over L3. So, what's our A3? We know that our A3 is 100 times 2 times 10 to the power 5 times open brackets 0 0.1752 minus 0 0.1 over 150, which is the length of the third element. So, if we um, simplify this, we have 10 raised to the power 4, 10 to the power 4 Newton. And uh, 
Tell us about four new things per millimeter squared. Then which equals to 10 kilonewton per millimeter squared. So let me confirm this answer again because I'm trying to have a conception about it. Yeah, I said that. I'm having a conception about it. 10 is power 4. And this is 10 kilonewton. Please take note of that. This 10 is power 4. Please ensure you use the calculator to confirm the answer. So there are error, like there may be error when it comes to calculation. But I'm sure of this answer and of this answer. So thank you. Thank you. Call it a day.